refrigerant quality and why it matters. That's the topic today for this episode of Checkup with Dr. Chuck. It's really important to keep an eye on refrigerant quality, protect the reputation of your business as well as your customers. So I want to talk a little bit about what we mean by quality, what things we measure, what are the limits, and what are the impacts it can have on your business and on your operation of air conditioning refrigeration systems that you're dealing with. My two rules that will keep you out of trouble when it comes to quality. Number one, always buy refrigerant from a supplier you know and trust. That is the number one rule to keeping straight and keeping on the right side of refrigerant quality. Second rule is always get refrigerant that has been specified and tested to HRI 700 standard specifications. I'll put a link in the comments below on how to access that information. But again, the HRI 700 spec for every refrigerant out there has a list of impurities, of things to measure, their limits, and even information on how you do the testing and how you do the measurements. So I want to put one up here, for example, uh, R410A, very common refrigerant. And we can see the types of things uh, that are considered as part of the purity specification. There's overall purity or organic purity of the refrigerant itself, uh, air, non condensables, moisture, non-volatile residue, acid, and some other things. So let's go through them uh, one by one, um, the, the important ones. So overall purity, or we may call it organic purity. The limit on that is 99.5% uh, minimum, or in other words, a maximum of 0.5% other uh, volatile impurities. And these are typically other refrigerant type molecules. And depending on what they are, they may have more or less an impact on operations. But certainly there's things in there that at those low levels, and even levels ex uh, slightly exceeding that specification, can cause problems, particularly if they're reactive, if they have a detrimental effect on the materials of compatibility in the system or the compressor. A second very important specification is what well, is called AIR or NCGs. NCG standing for non-condensable gases, sometimes referred to as NAG, non-absorbable gases. These are essentially things like nitrogen, oxygen, CO2, argon, things that are rather inert in a normal operating system. That is, they don't compress and evaporate. They're not too reactive. But what they can do is get trapped in parts of the system, like a condenser, and they really just block the surface area of the heat exchanger. So essentially, you're operating with a smaller than designed condenser or evaporator if it's on the other side. But it's usually in the condenser where we see the problems. So what happens if you have a smaller condenser, less surface area available for heat transfer, the condenser is going to have to run at higher pressures, higher temperatures. That results in the compressor doing more work, more wear on the compressor, electric bills go up. You could eventually have potential equipment failures uh, if it was left unchecked. So it's very important to be sure the uh, NCG or the air spec uh, is maintained. Another thing we see there is moisture or water, and it's uh, about a 10 part per million spec for most refrigerants. And water can do a few things in the system. Most of them aren't good. Um, if there's enough of it there and the temperatures are right, water can actually freeze inside of a system. You can actually get ice and it will block a capillary tube with small orifice and the system just won't work. Probably more likely is that water will react with things like a polyester lubricant in the system or other materials. And those break down and form other more reactive species, acid formation uh, from moisture in the system. Once you have acid, then that leads to corrosion. You have metal wear, uh, metal fatigue. You can have problems also with the acid interacting with uh, wire coatings, with enamels, varnishes, uh, plastics, elastomers, rubber seals, all kinds of materials in there don't particularly behave too well if they get a high level of acid. So you need to keep the moisture in check uh, so you don't have acid formation. Again, acid as itself is a speck in there. We don't want to introduce acid um, into the system besides moisture. But it's uh, always good to change filter dryers when you're working on a system. That will help scavenge up any uh, uh, extraneous moisture, those type of reactive species. And finally, down at the bottom of the list, there's something called non-volatile residue. And this is kind of a catch-all category for things like oil, rust, dirt, uh, 
things that are just not supposed to be inside of an operating system. We certainly don't want them coming in through the refrigerant. Again, another reason why we want to uh, stick with known suppliers and known uh, AHRI 700 specified materials when it comes to refrigerants. Uh, these are all important. Uh, a heads up, if you're doing service and you're pulling the refrigerant out, you're recovering it into a recovery cylinder and then putting it back in the system, those recovery cylinders can get pretty nasty. Uh, they can uh, show a lot of dirt, oil, uh, if they're not uh, checked and or cleaned and changed out every once in a while. So you want to be sure to keep uh, an eye on that. Again, the two, two most important things when it comes to refrigerant quality. One, always buy your refrigerant from a supplier you know and trust and are a supplier that runs their uh, refrigerants uh, through the AHRI 700 specification testing and can certify that uh, you're getting good quality refrigerant. I hope this is helpful. Any other questions for Dr. Chuck, please uh, feel free to contact me. I'll have my contact information down below and uh, have a great day. Look forward to talking to you soon. So long.